Everything we value, everything we hold dear, evokes such a feeling in us because it is God made manifest. We begin with God, the good. Only by loving the source can we love anyone or anything else. Let us name all we hold dear, God the good, and give thanks for it. I don't know about you, but that puts me in a, the Thanksgiving mood for sure. Okay. Again, these are my own interpretations, and I find them well suited to my current exploration of substance, unity, and gratitude together as one thing. Specifically, the idea that if we value something, we must see it as God, name it, unify with it, and be thankful for it. This is pretty straightforward when we're dealing with the good we already have. What about the good we are seeking? And Emma says, we're always seeking the good. Well, in truth, the good we are seeking already exists at the level of mind. Otherwise, we could not even conceive of it in the first place. So it's already there. While it may as yet be unmanifest in a tangible way, we have to treat it as though it has already materialized. Remember the prayer from the Upanishads, filled with God are the things we see, filled with God are the things we see not. Earlier, I shared a number of examples of people who named their good by attributing it to God. Their demonstrations occurred in different ways at different times, but each one was advanced by a sense of expectancy. The gatherer hunters expected light to follow darkness, and it did. The athletes believed their strength would carry them to victory. They expected it to, and it did. The artist expected a crowd of people to show up and admire her work, and she painted with a very real sense of that event in mind. The grandmother expected the baby's arrival and loved her profoundly long before she was actually born. So we have to imbue all the good we seek with a positive sense of expectancy. We have to prepare a place for our good to be made manifest. This begins as an intellectual exercise at the level of our thought. Dr. Holmes describes it uh, as, as receptivity, and for him, receptivity is a mental act. And he maintains that we can only receive what we believe we already have. If we don't believe we have it, we will never get it. Believing we already have something we cannot yet see requires us to approach it as though it is a very real thing right now. And there are some steps we can take to achieve this. First, we name our desired good. For example, health, financial abundance, perfect work, harmonious relationships, etc. Whatever you want for your perfect good. Second, we deny any idea that stands in opposition to it. Third, we classify the good we seek as substance, <coughs> spiritual substance. Fourth, we unify with God, God as source and God as substance. And finally, we open declare, openly declare our gratitude for the good we have named as though it has already become concrete, just like it's already here, like we're already enjoying it. I see these steps coming together along the lines of an affirmation, an affirmation that can be used in conjunction to our prayer treatments, something we can do on our own if we have a practitioner who's doing prayer treatment for us. Let's look at a few examples. Let's start with health. I live in total health. In my perfect reality, there is no sickness, disease, or weakness. Absolute health is the substance of spirit in expression. I am one with the creative power of God, and I am one with the power of God manifesting as my perfect health right now. My physical perfection is revealed, and I am grateful. What about money? That one's everybody's favorite. Financial abundance is my way of life. 
There is no lack, limitation, or deficiency. Prosperity is divine substance in circulation. I am one with the endless source, which is God, and I am one with the endless supply as God, circulating as my wealth. I give thanks for the divine currency that is mine to enjoy now. What about love? I am surrounded by and immersed in love. There is no separation, loneliness, or isolation in the life eternal. Love is the emanation of divine substance. I am one with the infinite mind of God, and I am one with the infinite heart of God. In gratitude, I allow love its full expression as me right now. Easy, right? Okay. We name our good, we reject anything like it, we recognize it as God, we unify with it, and we give thanks for it. And when we do this, we set in motion a, a power that creates the seamless transition of our good from the moment of conception to the moment where it manifests in perceptible form. A seamless transition. So next week, we'll be gathering together, presumably with loved ones, right, to celebrate Thanksgiving. And when we do that, let's actually be conscious about thanksgiving, about giving thanks. As we express gratitude for our blessings, let's give each one the highest name possible. Right? When you're at the table with your family, with your friends, and you're giving thanks, I want you to think of each manifestation of your good and give it the highest name possible. And let's remember to include the good we are seeking as well, as though it's already here. So give thanks for what you have, and give thanks for what you know is being delivered to you in divine right time. How many of you already know what you're doing Thanksgiving Day? Wow, almost everybody. No? Well, if that goes without saying. Reverend Dar, put the bird in the oven and come on down. That was an okay impersonation, yeah. <laughs> 10 o'clock, right here, gratitude service. After that, who knows what they're doing? Okay, excellent. So since you already have that in place, you can go ahead and plan for your conscious, systematic gratitude, right? There's no excuses. If you forget the steps, call me, email me. I'll remind you of what they are. I don't know where I'm going to be yet, or what I'm going to be doing, or where I will actually enjoy the celebratory meal. But I do know this. In addition to my conscious systematic gratitude, that's what I'm calling it, the conscious systematic gratitude plan, okay, I've also rewritten the old Catholic grace prayer that you say before meals. I needed something that better suits my current awareness, and hopefully the current awareness of the people who are fortunate enough to spend Thanksgiving with me. It goes like this. We are blessed indeed by the infinite gifts of spiritual substance which we continually receive by divine birthright through our consciousness of unity. Amen. I want to wish you the happiest of Thanksgivings ever. Let this be the very best year you have ever enjoyed. And be awake and aware in the moment and name your good, the good you have, the good you're expecting, all of it. Give it the highest name you possibly can think of. And don't skimp. Let it be wonderful. I want you to know how grateful I am for each and every one of you, for our spiritual family, and for this center, for this teaching which I count among my greatest blessings. As we go forth today from this place, I want you to remember that all we have and all we seek is good. And that, dear ones, is the highest name of God. And it is absolutely wonderful. And so are you. And so it is. Namaste. Namaste.